need a close-up on Roy. Did we miss that communication? I guess we did. That's Roy and Melanie. Melanie. For, there's, a name, there's a name that goes there. off in my head whenever I, I'm about to say your name and okay. I don't know what it is. It's like uh, uh, <laughs> founder uh, of uh, Run With Fire Ministry International, Roy Fields is uh, uh, Music Inc. Roy is a revival worship leader who has been leading worship for 20 years. Wow, that's a big introduction. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you're all over Europe. Yeah. He will call me from <laughs> every place in the world, and uh, it is amazing what you are with the great group that you travel with are doing all over Europe, all over America. Mm. That video that we just saw was in Philadelphia? Right in downtown Philadelphia where they signed the Declaration of Independence. Bishop Ann Jimenez and uh, Pastor John Blanchard of the Rock Church in Virginia Beach. And that was their platform? They put the platform there. They did it for a year advertising the event, praying for not just the elections, but really praying for America because the state that we're in. Mm -hmm. Melanie, you travel with this guy? I do, and I keep up. It's hard to believe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, you are the most amazing guest. Oh, dear Lord. For any church, for any organization, because you don't charge. No. It's kind of hard to. Uh, I, I, have you no understanding of all of this costs money? I mean, when you go to the gas station, do you say, fill it up? It's free. I mean, <laughs> no. You have to pay like everybody else. We pay, but we um, we were touched by revival back in the day. Like, or say, what year did we really get? I think in 2006. We, oh, no, I'm sorry, 1996. Many years. In many Brownsville, years. we were first touched. But then in 2006, we were in a Rodney Howard Brown meeting, and we refer to the fire of God as something that just changes your life, and it hit me. One of the things he taught on was giving. Mm -hmm. And when he taught on giving, I, I have to give credit to him. He, he, he released something in our heart for giving. And we started living that way. And we learned that if you won't be a burden to the church and you'll be real and give your heart, then the focus is no longer on the money and just doing another event. 
it's actually coming and bringing something that will actually benefit the church, the city, the community, the nation, the state, the country, whatever it is. And we've never lacked. It's not a gimmick. There's nothing behind it. Uh, what does Roy really mean? I'm strange in that way because I take up an offering. We receive a love offering at the end of the service when people actually have to get up, go get their children and go. And many people, I, all the time the stress comes on. Some of my, even my staff and people that work with us, Roy, hurry up, you know, you got to get the offering, got to yeah, get the yeah. offering after the worship. And I go, no, why would you want to give into a ministry? I haven't even heard what the guy has to say yet. What if I don't like it? I'll go take it back out of the offering. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. the focus is not on the money, Herman. The focus is on the presence of God. I don't want another meeting. Yeah. It gives us that freedom, doesn't it? Yeah. That we don't feel that pressure that it has to be about finances. Right. I've got to tell you, I was trying to put in my mind, I mean, Roy and I connecting, that's weird. Okay? <laughs> it was super nice. too weird. He's about 19 and I'm 73. <laughs> and, 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 and the music and the whole deal, okay? I'm as old as you've been on this show. Uh. Wow. Yeah. And you guys, you know, he's not a big talker normally. Okay. Uh, but he, you guys, when you call, I mean, I know it's going to be at least a half an hour. <laughs> I mean. So you don't even have to I ask who is it. Oh, dear. Do I have that? Because my normal conversation is saying, like, hello, yeah. bye, okay, I'll be there. Thank you. Bye. Right. I'm going, this is my husband talking all this time, and he says, I'm a phone person, you know. Wow. Anyway. Uh, well, anyway. No, it's neat how you guys talk that way. Anyway, I was, trying to, That's cool. I was trying to put together why we connected. And here it is. Some time ago, I produced a telethon. It was the 30th anniversary telethon. Roy was slated as one of the highlights Someone came to me and said, you're going to have to take him off. Now, I'm kind of explosive. If you really know when I'm involved in something. And so I kept that down. And I thought, hmm, I wonder how he's going to handle this. So I gave him a call. Because, you see, in this many years of doing Christian television, if you ever uh, have a guest slated, and I know this actually happened, and something takes place that you cannot have that guest, and I'm ha I have a high profile name in mind that actually said this, and we had to cancel, and the person said, you can't do that. Either you send us the money that we were going to receive, or we'll turn it over to our attorney. Wow. Now, you say Christians do that? Mm-hmm. And when I called, because <laughs> he had put aside all kinds of meetings. You, I mean, you had slotted that time. Mm. So I uh, gave him a call. I mean, it was a God thing. It's like, Herman, if this is the way it is, this is the way it is. So I thought, okay, let's give some time after this is all over and we've finished all of that telethon, everything. If I ever hear from him, it will probably be two years, five years, if ever. Not so. I mean, we, <laughs> it was like we were brothers that just had a speed bump. That impressed me because people that are controlled by the power of the Holy Spirit act that way. There's a lot of people that verbally talk about being controlled by the power of the Holy Spirit yeah. and you hear them speak it all the time and talk about that. But try that on them. Oh, by the way, I canceled this. Can't have you. I'll explain later what's going on. Get back to you. It won't be that way. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard for I think a lot of people in the world today. You think about it. Many people today, and in fact, more so Christians, are very skeptical 
of each other. It's hard to trust anybody anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be honest, it's hard to trust anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. You don't know if they have a motive or whatever. And see, here's the thing, I'm not anybody special. You know what, I have this little lot in time, just like you and you, Sharon, you have, and Melanie, and we have to do the best with what we have in front of us. And when I stand before God one day, I'm gonna have to answer for everything I've done. And you know what, it's a sobering thought when that becomes reality to people. And so I look at my life and I go, I'm not gonna be able to get away with anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people think they can get away with it. They're gonna have to answer one day. I think we get the idea when you say we're not gonna be able to get away with anything, that somehow God is like us. It's like if somebody does something, I may miss it. Mm. God doesn't affect. miss anything. Right, but it's still gonna affect you. Yeah. Oh yeah, There's but he sees inside. Yeah. He knows the motive of you out there in Philadelphia yeah. doing that. Yeah. Is it so Roy Fields can be propelled into something bigger? No. Somebody will see this and man, oh man, we missed this guy, grab him. Really? Uh, I mean, look at the Philadelphia footage. I have no sleeves. Yeah. I'm he screaming. I got a tooth missing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pitchy and I'm screechy. But that sells. But, but that sells. Let's get that. Yeah, Let's get that. Right. That's right. No, no, the, the, the motive has to change in America, in the world. And you know what? When you, I, I believe when Jesus came on the earth, and he spoke to people. He spoke from the motive of, I'm trying to do everything I hear the Father doing. And I want you to follow me as I follow God. And so that's, that's my heart's cry. That's Melanie's heart cry. We're trying to follow God. And you know what? I just, I'm sorry to say this on television. I'm really sorry. How can you charge to preach the gospel? How can you charge? Well, we got conference expenses and everything. Fine, let them handle it, and then whatever they want to give you is fine, which is what we do. If they do a conference, they go, what's your honorarium? I go, I don't know, you choose whatever you think is fair. You just do whatever you feel. And they go, no, 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 you must have a fee. I mean, you're on television, right? No, 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 you choose whatever you choose. And they end up blessing your socks off of us, you know, because we leave it that way. It, I'm not here for the money. Come on, I got kids. I want to be with my home. I want to be with my family. I've given my life to ministry. So I think about Jesus when he walked. He wouldn't charge. He just sat up against a tree and started sharing the, the keys to the kingdom. And let me show you how to have a better life on this world, you know? You walk into churches to minister, and then all of a sudden you will stay there for a week? Yeah. Maybe even. Not planned? No, not but planned. But God planned. Mm -hmm. Correct. How does that work? I'll set up what? We'll set up three days of meetings somewhere, and we try to do a minimum of three days. If you just do one-nighters, and sometimes I've done one-nighters because I'm coming through town on my way to another place, and I'll plant a seed to see, is this a place we can return to and really cultivate and help that pastor? And we encourage the worship team. We preach the gospel. Melanie preaches the gospel. Wow. You know, when I'm doing it, they're like, it's Roy. But then they think, oh, that's nice. Look at Melanie. She's Roy's wife. Yeah. Isn't she sweet? Yeah. But when she gets a microphone, that the altar fills up and people, and I, I, I come to the altar to get saved again. <laughs> yes, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, so we, we, um, we come into the church and, and, and the pastor is a little, it, I have to actually talk the pastor down a little bit sometimes because he's going now, what do you really need? And I go, nothing. We just want to receive a love offering. Any email addresses that come in through the meetings, if it's visitors coming in because I'm coming, we're going to give them to you so you can host your events and use those emails to bring other people to your events. I mean, the it's truth a partnership. Is, the truth is we really want that, don't we? Absolutely. I mean, our heart is we, we love the, mm. the idea of, of revival breaking out. And I mean, truthfully, I mean, there was a season in the 50, 40s and 50s when you would have great tent meetings and revivals going in almost every city in America. And then during the 90s, we had seasons where revivals were breaking all out. And we were birthed and touched in seasons like that. And nobody told me it wouldn't be like that all the time. Yeah. But I love that atmosphere when you can feel the tangible presence of God. When God shows up and, you know, finally it's for real. finally people, instead of just in it's their real. head, they see God being the God that's being preached to them. And he's really doing the stuff that they tell him he does. Mm -hmm. And we, that's our hope and our passion is, God, just give us a place where your revival will break out. We'll, we'll give up everything. We'll camp there. We gave our house away seven years ago just so we could be free to be camped in a place where God would break out. Yeah. Now, things are changing, though, in oh, America. Oh, yes. Because 
we were just talking before we went on live. Mm -hmm. It's not the same, is it? No. Why? You know, I have to say, Bill O'Reilly called it. I'm not a big Bill O'Reilly fan because he's pretty straight and hardball, but he, you have to give him credit. He, he just comes right to the point, even if it makes you mad. And this isn't to endorse that. But he said right in the middle of the elections, he, he came on the studio unplanned, unscheduled, sat down, and he says, and, and, and you know, Romney and Obama, and, 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 he, and he goes, I guess he goes, I, I hate to be the oracle. He says, I, gosh, I really hate to be the oracle. He says, but I'm sorry, traditional America is gone. We are not the same country we were not even 10, 15, 20 years ago. That's right. He says, people are no longer voting from their heart. They're voting from their wallet. They want stuff, and they want their government to give them stuff. He says, that's why we're in the condition we are. I mean, here's, here's a network. <clears throat> people say they're favorable to Republicans. No, they're just trying to speak the truth. And I, again, I'm not endorsing any kind of news organization. But when he said that, it was almost like God did speak through him and said, you want a king? I'll give you a king. That's right. That's I don't want right. you to have a king. I want to be your king. But you want a king? You can have a king. But the ministry, TV has turned to, yeah. let it's me fake. tell you how you Very can fake. get all the stuff you yep. want. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay? This prayer cloth that I will send you. Oh, don't go there. <laughs> I've got 20 oh, of Lord. the most famous preachers in America that have laid their hands on this cloth. And for a thousand dollars, I will pray and you will have your own cloth. Now, and my initials will be on them. Yeah, that's, <laughs> and my sweat. that is stuff. I know. So we started it. Is that what you're saying, Herman? America feels like they're yeah. entitled to everything. Yeah. Yeah. In the year, I mean, we've spent, my gosh, we've literally spent in the last five years almost one entire year, and you can count every night of there being a revival meeting in that year. I've traveled to 59 cities in the UK alone. We've been all across Europe. I drove all the way across Germany, five cities, Stuttgart, Berlin, all, you just name them. <clears throat> And they all look at Americans and they think, why do you act so entitled to everything? And they're correct, but they're also wrong. Because Americans feel like, I'm American, so I should be able to get what I want, and I'm entitled to this. My gosh, I'm American. But Europeans, they say, you know, we recognize that, you know, Christian Europeans, they go, we have everything because God allowed us to have it. And there's a grace and there's a humility in people. We can learn a lot from the Europeans. And when we look what at... What are the size of your meetings in Europe? Uh, oh, we've had some large meetings. When I first went into the UK, never been in the country in my life. In 2008, the first city we went to was Maidenhead. We had about 650 show up. 650. Yeah, the next place was Southampton. And they didn't know you? No, they knew me from TV. The power of television is amazing. And this is a place they always say it's going to be hard. In yeah. the UK and Europe, they tell us it's hard. And I mean, if you look at the European nations, you can see what America could look like in many years to come if we keep going down the same path. Yeah, exactly. That's the more you take oh, God yeah, out, yeah. the more, you, the more you, yeah. you talk about, well, it's not really about this religion or that religion. And, um, but they say it's going to be difficult. And we go in there, and people get to worshiping. You see 70-year-old men worshiping. You see 13-year-olds, and they're up now at the altar. Now you're talking about my age. Well, well you're young, right? <laughs> you know what I think the secret is, that, and what she's saying, I think the secret is, is the fact of in our services, and it's, it's not about me. You know, I know there's people watching. They're going to go, oh, well, that's easy for you. You know, I've got this and that. Yeah. This is my service and what I have to do with it. But here's it is, or here it is from what I've, I've learned over the years. If you will be genuine. Yeah and you will be real, yeah. people will trust the Jesus in you. Yeah. And, they'll go, and I think what people have done, and to my disadvantage, being screechy, being pitchy in some areas, I'm trying to make it better. Every year I try to yeah. work on that. But they go, this guy's not kidding. He's really worshiping God. He's not performing. And it drives people who perform nuts. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not against entertainment. Herman, Sharon, I am not against entertainment. If I buy a ticket to come see you, you better be good, yeah. or I want my money back. Yeah. But when it comes to worshiping God and you come to the house of the Lord, people go, well, I am the house. Okay, if you come to the house of God to worship, 
you better worship. Wow. You better lift up Jesus and it better not be anything about you or I'm leaving. I didn't come to see you. I came to worship him. Rich, how, how many minutes do I have left? Because I missed your other signal. Six. Six? This CD you have to get. There, there's the website <laughs> right on there. I mean, awesome. this is how I mean, Did you like now, it? Now, yeah. this is getting played, right? Oh, yeah. I just got, I just recently, when I was in Dublin um, two and a half weeks ago, I uh, just got an email from the Family Life Network the national radio station, they're going to play that the first Sunday after Christmas. Mm, great. That's the first time I've been on the radio. Okay, now tell me, how did this come together? Went to Nashville. I was actually on your program last year, the same month ago from this taping, and I had just come from writing the song Because of You that's on that CD, and got together with some of Michael W. Smith's writers, who one of the guys that produced for Toby Mac, and um, now you're throwing names around. Oh, I'm just sorry. Just, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Somebody says, it's a nameless, faceless generation. Yeah, right. Well, you have a name and a face, and God wants to use yeah, it. Right. But anyway, um, it, it was, so we recorded in Toby Mac Studio, and we put these songs together. These songs were birthed out of worship, whether it be a hook or a melody. And then I brought it to some people that knew what they were doing, and we put it together. And I said, I don't want to lose the anointing on it. Wow. We, we can polish it a little bit, but I don't want to lose the anointing. And I let them lead me. And that's what we came up with. Not so screechy either. Yeah, not so screechy. There's vocals no vocals screechy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> most, most of what I do in programming is unplanned. T, if you get... <laughs> I, love it. I mean, he knows, he knows, he doesn't that's plan awesome. anything. I just got to be ready. That's awesome. Bring it up. Yeah. This is off the CD. Because of you. Because of you, the blind can finally see. Because of you, the deaf and mute will see. Because of you, the lame can run and leave. Because of you, the prison. Show the guy that's sang, singing. Is free. There you go. There is no Wow. There at all. wow. No oh, oh, oh. oh. You, you, know, you know, there's a Amazing market for what this. Computers can do to your <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> but so this is the latest out, right? It's the latest so if they out, go to that yeah. website, they can pull one off. They can go to romafire.com or they can go on iTunes right now as you're listening to the program and they can listen to it right now and download it and have it on oh, their iPod, I, iPad. Whatever. I watched that mm. on iTunes. Uh, and and yeah, I, I mean and you got a, you've got a ton of YouTube DVDs videos. on there. Oh yeah, yeah. Of of the music, the which is from revival. just yeah. just powerful. Awesome. More to come, man. We're gonna bring more out. And you know what? Of the seven years we've been on the road, we gave up our home. Did I tell you this, by the way? I don't even remember if I told you. We just got a new home. No, you didn't really? tell me that. Oh, let see, me all tell of those you. times we talked together, you didn't tell me about that one. I'm sorry. It just it happened, just happened like two literally ago. two days ago. I got the keys. Are you ready for this? God gave us a beautiful, brand new house on a golf course. It's like a mansion on a golf course. My manufacturer who did my CDs and sends them out around the world, he has a house, he's from the UK. He was impacted a little bit by the music. He's blown away by everything that's going on. He doesn't understand it. He says, this has to be God. And he has this house. It's a five bedroom, four bathroom, three car garage on a golf course. 3,600 square foot. You gotta, people need was, to understand, we lived in a bus. <laughs> yeah, and, and you gave your house away. And we gave our, well, we, we gave all our stuff away yeah. and we got rid of our home. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so he's, he gave it to you or he's allowing you to no, live? No, we were renting it. We're oh, renting we're it for the year. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you have to understand, we've been on the That's road That's even for better than a gift because you don't have to pay anymore. That's right. <laughs> That's right. There's even an out lease uh, where we pay to get out of the lease because we got to stay fluid and liquid. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, we were five and a half months in the UK last year. Just for my kids, they're like, I've never had my own bedroom, and they're running up there. Just before Christmas, too. 
just before so, Christmas. You know, we don't yeah. know what's in store, but we really uh, feel next year, this next year is going to be something powerful it's be a big year. for okay. America. And we'll, for we'll have you back on kind of yeah. creating I'm, all that with video and the whole thing. I'm excited. Well, yeah. you don't even know. We just came back from Norway last week. You got video of that? 35, oh, oh yeah. yeah. It was okay. amazing. 3,500 people okay. showed up that's, in Norway. That's powerful. an next show. Yeah. And use that website. If, now, people, if they contact you and say, I need you here, so and so and so and oh, so. Oh, it's easy. You just go to runwithfire.com. You click the invite. Tell us what you're feeling in your heart, and we just come. Wow. We'll pray about it, though. Yeah. We'll pray about yeah. it. Yeah. You know, just come. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Is the answer to every need you may have. Mm -hmm. This video you're about to see, this is the second part of Philadelphia. But this is the worship part also. Fabulous. Take a look at this. This is a realm of your glory. This is a realm of your grace. I can feel your mighty power. It is moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels. With God's glory on the wings. Like the voice of many words. Hello, I'm Bill Malone of Christian Television Network's Plan Giving Department. Did you know that a will is one of the most important documents that you will ever sign? Yet a majority of Americans die each year with no will, and so the government receives a large percentage of their estate in taxes and fees. We can help you eliminate this loss with our free Guide to Wills and Trusts booklet. Call the number on your screen or go to our website for further information. Your long-range plans deserve special attention. Watch Life Today, weekdays as James and Betty Robison provide real answers to real problems through compelling guests and miraculous testimonies. Witness God's love through inspiration, hope, and life. Join us in making a real difference in our world by changing countless lives and building stronger families. Don't miss Life Today with James and Betty Robison, weekdays on this station. a TV show dedicated to changing the way